The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Metabolic Maintenance Webinar Thursdays. This is Dr. Jared Scourin. I'm a senior naturopathic physician with Metabolic Maintenance, and I uh, really want to thank you for uh, coming and attending today's webinar. Today's webinar is going to be on detoxification. Now, uh, up front, I'm going to have to apologize. I've got the flu right now, so if uh, my voice cracks or coughs, uh, just uh, initial apologies for that. But uh, I'll make sure we get through everything that we're going to see today. So uh, one uh, kind of rule or note, there are questions, a uh, question bar or a question blank that you can fill in uh, on this GoToWebinar uh, series. So if you do have a question, feel free to type it in the question box, and I will get to answer it either during the webinar or at the end of the webinar. So make sure you uh, answer, ask any questions that you'd like. So uh, starting out, why do we need to detox with our patients? Well, I'll tell you, we are in uh, an extremely, extremely toxic world where we have air pollution that is circles the globe. And, you know, uh, air pollution is not just in our country. If somebody in China is burning a computer monitor, then the mercury gets in the air and comes on over and rains on us. Uh, and, of course, anywhere in the world where you're producing hot air toxins, they will eventually circumnavigate the globe. So even though we may have certain pollution regulations here in America, that does not uh, affect the entire globe. Uh, we also have lots of water pollution from industry. Don't forget water pollution from reused pharmaceuticals. Once you go to the bathroom and flush it down, your, uh, your city water treatment plant takes out bacteria and other things but does not remove any pharmaceuticals. So you are now drinking. Anytime you drink uh, city water, you're going to drink somebody else's antidepressants and antibiotics and birth control pills and the like. Uh, don't forget pollution on foods from pesticides and heavy metals. We also have genetic engineering of our foods where the DNA of the food actually produces pesticide on the cell wall. Just like our salivary glands produce saliva, the cell of the food is producing pesticides. So extremely, extremely toxic world that we have to get around. Now here's another source where your child may find toxins. And again, you know, who knows what we're eating or drinking or where it's coming from, but I'm very happy that this child put the Lego down so they could brace themselves by drinking the dog water. Uh, this is a quick little graph on how our body detoxifies uh, substances. So on the left, we have toxins, we have drugs, we have pesticides, we have whatever the body's trying to get rid of. Now, this goes through the liver, either through phase one and or phase two detoxification. Now, what does that mean? Well, phase one detoxification are all the cytochrome P450 enzymes that uh, make a water-soluble type of substance or a fat-soluble uh, type of substance so it can be excreted out the body. Phase two is a part of liver detoxification where we actually add on other atoms and molecule groups to help remove it from the body. And this is really key because this is how we're going to enhance detoxification. We're going to make sure that the liver is uh, or has all the nutrients it needs to do that. And another thing, you see that big orange star down at the bottom, reactive oxygen species. During phase one detoxification, uh, free radicals are created and those enhance damage to the body. So when we are detoxifying, we're going to have to protect the body uh, as we're doing that. Now, again, if you don't think your patients have toxins, then take a look at this study. I believe this was performed um, in association with the EPA. It was a study on the U.S. population where they looked at 210 people who were quote-unquote healthy, people who had no disease, they had no known toxic exposure. They took a look at their fat, and uh, of course fat is where most of the toxins reside. They biopsy their fat, found 167 different toxins, including DDTs, PCBs, phthalates, solvents, pesticides, heavy metals, you name it. They found that many different substances in people who were healthy. And the average in the study was 91 different toxins, toxins in each person. So every person on a average who seems healthy has 91 different toxins in their body. Okay, And, of course, that's going to affect the body and it's going to affect the health of your patient. So this is a picture from a website that I really like and I send my patients to, www.scorecard.org. It's an anti-pollutant group. What you do is type in your zip code that tells you all about the pollutants uh, that are being released within your county. And uh, one of the cool things, you can compare it to the rest of the country. And so what I have here is I typed in my zip code which is in Connecticut, and I have New Haven County here. And as you can see, New Haven County uh, over there on the right, those red bars, 
we have the top 10% of air releases of recognized carcinogens as well as developmental and toxic hits. No wonder we see so much infertility in my practice. And, uh, you know, take a look at your county and find out what people are being exposed to because odds are though when those things are being, uh, you know, when patients interact with those things, they're getting those diseases. And the website will actually go through and show you what kind of health conditions those uh, certain, certain pollutants will cause. So it's really, really great website. Now, toxins increase the risk for cancer, asthma, autism, AD, diabetes, anything with the immune system, anything with the nervous system, all the endocrine disruptors affecting our hormones, as well as affecting heart function. So that might as well be everything that our patients have. So if you have patients who are chronically ill, I highly, highly, highly suggest you test them for toxins. Now, here are some unique patients you probably have in your practice, especially if you deal with natural remedies. Uh, people who are quote unquote chemically sensitive, which means if they're around any sort of chemicals, and uh, I had a patient in my office who, if there was any kind of highlighter in the air or anyone who had perfume or deodorant, she would feel extremely worse. So those chemically sensitive patients, as well as caffeine sensitive patients, people who drink a cup of coffee at lunch and stay up all through the night, then obviously their liver is not removing the caffeine. Other patients can only tolerate small doses of medications because their liver is not processing it. People who are resistant to weight loss, even though they're trying diet and exercise, infertility, cancer, autoimmune disease again. Here is a list of foods which are called the dirty dozen, which many of you are probably familiar with. And uh, the EPA comes out with this list of the top 10 most pesticide foods. And obviously, it costs more money to eat organic, and not all of our patients can afford that. But if they're going to buy some organic, might as well concentrate on the foods that are the most toxic. So here's the list, celery, peaches, strawberries, spinach, cherries, kale and collard greens, apples, potatoes, blueberries, imported grapes, nectarines, and bell peppers. So if you're going to buy organic, buy these organic, at least. Uh, this next list is called the Clean 15, the top 15 least pesticide foods. So these, because it's mostly their thick skin, are not, excuse me, susceptible to many kind of bugs that are trying to eat them, and there's no use, to, no need to to spray them with pesticides because bugs aren't eating these foods. Of course, that's the main reason for pesticides. So here you can see onions, avocado, kiwis, corn, pineapple, et cetera, et cetera. You can see these and say, these have thick skins. Bugs aren't going to get through there and eat these. So these, as inorganic, are going to be uh, or going to have very few pesticides. Uh, mercury, everybody's aware of mercury. Your patients are probably aware of mercury. Tuna, tuna, tuna. Everybody knows, uh, but here's an interesting list of foods that have the highest amount of mercury. Interestingly enough, tuna is not number one, it's number five, and uh, some interesting fish that have the lowest amount of mercury there. So my favorite down here is uh, tilapia. Tilapia actually has a huge amount of vitamins and minerals across the board. I, I really think it's the most nutritious fish. So make sure, of course, you're getting wild-caught fish and not farm fish. Um, going into the canned salmon, most canned salmon you see there, doesn't have much mercury, and it's also usually wild salmon. Now, of course, check the check the can, but uh, commonly that's what it is. Now, farm versus fresh salmon. I uh, was at a restaurant and got into an argument with the manager of the restaurant, a seafood restaurant about farm versus fresh, where he was uh, very much on the side that farmed salmon is far superior than fresh salmon. But this is some information from the EPA. Farm salmon has 40 times the PCBs compared to wild salmon, beef, pork, poultry, and milk, as well as having high levels of those other toxins listed there. And what, I, what really surprises me, the EPA recommends only one meal of farm salmon per month. And that's per month. Anything more than that will increase your risk of cancer because all those toxins that are in that farm salmon are giving you cancer. And... The salmon that's in the North Sea, the waters around Scotland, are the most toxic. So if you get farmed salmon that says from the North Sea, Scotland, etc., the EPA recommends only half a meal per month. That's one and a half ounces, or you increase your risk of cancer. Now, what really boggles my mind is marketing can go a long way. I went into Whole Foods and uh, looked at their salmon. They said, oh, this is the best farmed salmon from the pristine, clear waters of the North Sea. And I said, with the North Sea around Scotland? They said, yes. I said, that's, that's the most toxic. It's the most toxic farm salmon you can get. So obviously their marketing is to the opposite of that. So you really have to watch out what you're looking at. Now, heavy metals, of course, we're all familiar with. Here's a list of symptoms as well as sources of heavy metals. We've got aluminum, which uh, gives abnormal speech, potentially Parkinson's, arsenic. I see a lot of arsenic in, uh, down in Connecticut. I think it's the water. Uh, cadmium, lead, and, of course, mercury and, and where we get it from. I think dental fillings are some of the worst sources of mercury because 
It's actually the mercury vapor that evaporates off the filling, and it's, uh, the mercury vapor is more toxic than the methyl mercury that's in tuna. And uh, there was a, a study, I believe, in 2005 in the German, uh, German journal Gesundheitswesen, which uh, describes very well about mercury uh, methyl versus the vapor. So we know our patient has toxins. If they're sick, they have toxins. So how do we test for them? Well, here's a list of different tests that you can perform. If you're looking for heavy metals, feces is actually a good sample of acute heavy metal toxicity. For chronic heavy metal toxicity, I prefer challenged urine. Uh, the hair analysis that's out there only shows acute toxicity. It does not show body burden of, uh, of toxicity. Now, if you are going through some kind of detox over a long period of time, then you know, whenever you're going through the detox, the hair probably represents that acute, uh, that acute sample because it's acute toxicity, but from within, not from without. Now, we don't have to just test heavy metals. We have to test pesticides, plastics, phthalates, etc. And uh, there's lots of blood tests that are out there that will screen for those toxins. Uh, I also test for porphyrins. Porphyrins are part of the body that develops heme and hemoglobin. And it's very sensitive to heavy metal damage and toxin damage. So I will run porphyrin testing on all my, all my patients and use that as a, a marker for improvement, not only subjective symptoms, but we'll see improvements in the porphyrin. Because you, you can't test for every toxin out there. They're, they're innumerable. You're going to test for 91 toxins, which is the average in each person? No, you're not. Uh, you can also test different liver detoxification pathways in some of our alternative labs. You can also test caffeine clearance and other certain chemicals in some of those alternative labs as well. Um, this next slide shows the molecular structures. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to go back a few. Sorry. This slide shows kind of the molecular structures uh, as a substance and a toxin goes through phase one and phase two. On the left, we have R, which is a toxin, either goes through oxidation to become lipophilic and then becomes uh, conjugated with glutathione or becomes uh, hydrolyzed, becomes reduced, produces some free radicals, then has a sulfur group, acetyl group, or a gluco, uh, has a, goes through glucuronidation in phase two. Now, here are the actual molecular structures, whatever's in the red box, is the molecule or atoms that are added on to the toxin. So we see glucuronidation, acetylation, amino acid conjugation, et cetera, et cetera. And these are how the liver goes through phase two detoxification. Now, when it comes to treatment, what we do, what's effective, is giving the body these cofactors. Because if the body doesn't have these cofactors, you can't go through phase two detox, period. And so what happens? Toxins build up in the body. And that's really the, the primary goal of our treatment to enhance detoxification. And when, when I say detoxification, I don't want you to think cleanse. I know a lot of my patients think, oh, it's cleanse, and we're going to be drinking oil and garlic and cayenne, and our, my gallbladder is going to go into spasm. I'm going to have diarrhea for 20 days. This is not cleansing. This is adding the nutrients that the liver needs to naturally detoxify. And where do those toxins go? They go out through the kidneys, they go out through the liver, they, you breathe them out, or they come out through the skin. So here's kind of a quick picture of different uh, nutrients that enhance phase one and phase two, which in here they call step one and step two. And of course, they go out through the urine, they go out through the feces. So how can we enhance what the body is trying to do already? Well, we've got to make sure the person is pooping and peeing and breathing and their skin is clear. So make sure your patient is moving their stool on a daily basis. Before they, uh, before they go through any kind of detox, make sure they're drinking enough water so they're urinating enough. And then you're going to enhance the phase two detox pathways first to make sure that's cleaned out before you try to enhance phase one detoxification. Um, and don't forget phase one also creates uh, free radicals that we have, to, uh, we have to remove. So again, real briefly, phase one is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. There's over 50 to 100 different cytochrome P450 enzymes. There's a lot of research around them around drugs, herbs, and different foods. So you can go to pubmed.org, type in CYP450, and then whatever herb or medicine your patient is taking, and you can see if it's, uh, if it's processed by, by which enzyme. And this is how a lot of our herb-drug interactions are discovered, is that they're both processed through the same cytochrome P450 enzyme. Phase two, as I mentioned, adds different molecules to be excreted in the stool and the urine. Uh, 
So how are we going to enhance? We are going to enhance phase one. Again, this happens at the second step. We enhance phase one with antioxidants, B vitamins, glutathione, uh, flavonoids, and milk thistle. In phase two, we enhance with sulfur molecules, cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli, onion, garlic, and other amino acids like methionine, cysteine, NAC, glycine, glutamine, other methyl groups and trimethylglycine, methyl B12, SAMe, and milk thistle as well. I want to protect those hepatocytes as the free radicals are spinning out of control. Now, let's let's get to the oops, there we go. Let's get to the uh, brass tacks and what are we going to give our patient to detoxify? Well, metabolic maintenance has a protein powder which we've had for a while called Metabolic Detox Complete. It's uh, my favorite detox powder. Well, it's our only detox powder, but it's my favorite protein powder that we have. My wife drinks this every morning for breakfast. She milks it, mixes it with rice milk, some raspberries, and some bananas. And uh, it's something that your patients can take on a daily basis, A, as an active treatment to remove toxins, or B, as a preventive so that when they are exposed to toxins every day, as we all are, they make sure they remove them before they build up. So uh, this is a quick list of the supplements that are added to our detox powder. Now, it's a complete multivitamin, multimineral powder. It's a hypoallergenic pea, rice, and hemp protein. No dairy, no soy, no wheat, no gluten, no eggs, no nuts. So obviously it's wonderful for people who are allergic, chemically sensitive, etc. And uh, I'll tell you, you mix it with rice milk and it actually tastes pretty good. Uh, of course, you can mix it with whatever you want. You can mix it with water. If they're eating dairy, mix it with yogurt. Mix it with some uh, ice cream, whatever you like. So here's just a few research studies about the individual ingredients we use for detox. Um, so. Here we have uh, the ground flax, which is organic flax seed, and, uh, which removes toxins as a fiber. It's anti-inflammatory. It's antioxidants. protects against ischemic damage and prevents free radicals from generating, as well as being protective to the liver cells. Uh, Medium-chain triglycerides uh, decreases deposition in adipose, which is great. Anybody who's trying to lose weight, as most people who are detoxifying are. And uh, medium-chain triglycerides actually will increase weight loss in your patient. Inulin helps with uh, reducing diabetes and high cholesterol, as well as improving fat reduction and weight loss. Glutathione, I'm sure we're all familiar with, is the most powerful antioxidant in the body. Now, you can put glutathione in as a supplement, but it has an extremely short half-life. So we don't like to do that. But what we do do is put in the three amino acids that create glutathione. So glycine, glutamine, and cysteine, usually in the form of N-acetylcysteine, uh, is there in our formula. So your patient is going to be creating their own glutathione. MSM, uh, also great not only for the methyl groups, but also the sulfur groups, so it's kind of a double whammy in enhancing phase two detoxification, and also inhibits pro-inflammatory mediators. And it uh, looks like I wrote mediatory mediators there. That's a, that's a little excessive right there, but maybe MSM is just that good. Calcium D-glucrate, another one of my favorites, especially for metabolizing exogenous estrogens. Uh, calcium D-glucrate is found in cruciferous vegetables and uh, a fantastic ingredient in our powder as well. Some green tea extract uh, improves weight management, management, increases fat oxidation through increasing internal temperature and also regulates breakdown of fat. So uh, this is another good thing to, to use. If your patient is caffeine sensitive, uh, you may want to use this uh, powder in the morning anyway, just in case that green tea keeps them awake. Uh, I highly doubt it would happen. I've never seen it happen, but uh, anything's possible. NAC, one of my most favorite amino acids, uh, reverses liver damage with multiple, multiple drugs, including methotrexate, reverses brain damage caused by aspartame. Any of your patients drinking diet sodas, get them off the diet sodas. Aspartame is damaging the brain, causing anxiety, et cetera. Uh, improves fecal excretion of mercury, prevents arsenic-induced liver damage, just a wonderful, wonderful amino acid. Methionine as well, as a sulfur group, in, uh, improves oxidative stress, reverses cadmium toxicity, and may actually increase lifespan. Of course, that was an animal study. So those are all the great things that are included in the metabolic detox complete powder. So again, I really encourage patients to use that on a daily basis, not only to treat, but to prevent. Uh, our next product that we're showing is called Deluxe Scavengers. This is a, a fantastic antioxidant formula. You can use it for anything, for detox or any of your patients that need antioxidants. We've got a combo of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, 30 milligrams of CoQ10, glutathione, NAC, bioflavonoids, and rutin. So it's, it's a wonderful combo product that we've got there. We also have this other product called Metabolic Detox. So don't confuse this with Metabolic Detox Complete. This is basically a milk thistle and an alpha-lipoic acid supplement. Now, alpha-lipoic acid 
another wonderful, wonderful antioxidant. We also have some NAC in there and some stuff. So this is what I do with my patients. Obviously, you know, you do what you feel is going to be most effective with your patients, but first thing you want to do, <coughs> excuse me, is enhance phase two detoxification. So for three weeks, give them the metabolic detox complete, two scoops of the protein shake, which is going to enhance all that phase two detox, sulfur groups, methyl groups, glutathione, amino acids, etc. I also support with extra antioxidants, so I give three caps of the deluxe scavengers, and then I'm going to switch and add on supporting phase one detox. Now, some patients I'll stop the phase two and just do the phase one. Some patients I'll do it all. And so I'll give the metabolic detox and the deluxe scavengers and the metabolic detox complete, uh, just depending on how toxic they are. So if, if you're looking at somebody who is not very toxic, maybe wants to go preventive, I would alter the detox complete and the detox. But if uh, you've got toxic patients, then definitely start with the powder, do that for three weeks, and then do everything. And uh, people tend to get, get quite healthy uh, quite quickly, which is great. Now, if you do have an extremely toxic patient, you'll probably want to add on some other detoxifiers like DMSA, DMPS, EDTA, et cetera. Um, those are key layers where what we're using is not a key layer. It's not grabbing that heavy metal and bringing it out of the body. What it's doing is enhancing the liver's abilities to detox on its own, so really helping the body get done what needs to be done. So that is our webinar. Uh, if you guys have questions, please type in the questions. Wanted to announce some uh, discount promotions Metabolic Maintenance is having. All of their vitamin D supplements, which is the 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, and 25,000 IU capsules. Now the 25,000 IU capsule has K2 Meta Q7 in it. Wonderful for any of your osteoporosis patients. If your patients are taking 50,000 a week, just give them two of these caps. Your bottle's going to last a, a long, long time. We also have ubiquinone and our new ubiquinol. So they come in 50, 100, 200, and 400 milligram caps. So you can get either ubiquinone and ubiquinol. What's the difference? Uh, we, I did a webinar on CoQ10 a few months ago. So feel free to go to our website, www.metabolicmaintenance.com, and take a look at that webinar. And, and while I'm mentioning that, all of our webinars are on archive. So we don't have any handouts that we give to uh, listeners, but you can go online and listen to these webinars at any time uh, free, you know, in, in your free time and uh, take a look at things and jot down notes. We also have our new basic maintenance, which is our multivitamin that has 2,000 IUs of vitamin D in it now, which is great. A lot of people are going for the new higher recommendations by the uh, International uh, Academy of Sciences. And, of course, our CalMag Plus now also has 2,000 IUs of vitamin D and K2 Meta Q7, which, of course, is the preferred form of vitamin K for bone growth. So the promotion is buy 10, give 2 free. And, again, please type in your questions. I uh, uh, want to make sure everybody signed up on our Twitter account. Every once in a while, there will be sales on our Twitter account that uh, are not available for anyone else. These discounts are not available for distributors and uh, are not available through distributors either, only available through Metabolic Maintenance. There's our phone number down there, 1-800-772-7873, where you can contact our customer service representatives. And if you have any clinical questions, feel free to email me at jared, J-A-R-E-D, at metabolicmaintenance.com. He went to Jared. Uh, we've got a couple questions here. Um, if someone is extremely toxic and has tested positive for parasites as well as leaky gut, would you get rid of the parasite first, go through the 4R protocols, and then start working on the liver? Um, I, I would say yes, because if, if you've got, well, I'm going to say yes and no. If you've got leaky gut, you run the risk of reabsorbing the toxins after the liver has processed them and is excreting them through the bile. Uh, however, if you do start detox, you will enhance any water-soluble uh, excretion. Now, Everybody's concerned, geez, if I move my toxins around and I reabsorb them, they're going to go somewhere else in their body, which, you know, is definitely uh, theoretically possible, but you've got those toxins in there anyway. So is moving them around going to be a problem? It, possibly. So if you do have parasites and, and the patient's leaky gut is extremely bad, uh, maybe you'd want to treat that first for a couple of months and then add on the detox. It's really kind of a clinical call, but those are the concerns. Now, uh, I treat a lot of candida in my office because I see a lot of autistic patients. And a lot of kids have candida and can't get rid of it. And there's a theory out there that mercury will actually potentiate yeast in the intestines. So until you detox, you can't get rid of your yeast permanently. And all those people who have been on that statin and diflucan uh, for years and years, why? Why isn't that immune system coming back and fighting it on its own? I really do think it's the mercury toxicity. So uh, any other questions, please feel free to type them in.
All right. Well, there are no more questions. Thank you very much for uh, listening in on our webinar. Actually, this is very well attended, so I'm very happy. Again, if you have any further questions, feel free to email me or feel free to watch the webinar again. We'll probably be up online next week, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month at our next webinar. Thanks, everybody.